Is that not my husband? What is he doing with that woman? Please help me greet your husband and tell him to come to work on time tomorrow. We have a lot to do. No problem, I will. I knew it. I knew that man was cheating on me. I have been suspecting him for a long time now, and today I decided to monitor him, and here he is, doing exactly what I have been suspecting him of. No problem. When he finishes, he will come and meet me in the house. I am waiting for him. Today, he will know why, I am called Veronica. I am waiting. He will tell me what that woman has that I don't have. Today will be hot for both of us. Dear. Where are you coming from? What kind of question is that? Is that a welcome you should tell me? I should tell you welcome for chasing after all the girls in this town. I can see you don't have shame at all. Listen, if you don't get out of my face now, you will regret it. What kind of woman are you? How did you know I was chasing after girls? Did you see me with any? You thought I didn't know what you were doing. Listen, I have eyes. I am seeing all you are doing, and today you must tell me where you are coming from because there is no reason for you to leave this house in the morning and be coming back by this time. Today is not work, so where are you coming from? I can see you are set to make trouble, but I don't have your time. Please, I want to rest. Is a lie, today is today, and you must have my time. In fact, this house will break into two today. I am ready for you. Where are you coming from? If you are a woman, try stopping me, and I will make sure you see the other side of me. No problem. In fact, I am ready for you to do your worst. Get out of my way. You are not going anywhere until you tell me where you are coming from. How dare you? Don't you have fear? Dear, they have started fighting again. I think you should go and separate them. Before something bad happens. You are right. Mr. Peter, Mr. Peter. Get out of my way. I can see you are looking for someone to kill you. Kill me if you want. I am ready to die today. You think I will allow you to go out again? Continue fighting. You will fight today until you are tired. Then get ready to die. I think I have to go in before something bad happens. Mr. Peter, be a man and stop fighting with a woman. This woman is sent to destroy me. I have never had rest in my house since I married her. There is no day she doesn't make trouble with me. If I stay with her trouble, if I go out and come back trouble, what did she want me to do? You have not seen anything, and until you tell me where you are coming from, we will not stop fighting. Madam, please calm down. I am begging you. Mr. Peter, I want to see you outside. It is because of you that I am allowing him to go. If not, this house will fall on both of us. I don't blame you. I blame myself for falling into the hands of a troublemaker like you. If not because of my children, oh no. I don't care. Just thank Mr. Donatus for saving you. If not, I don't need to say it because you know me. Mr. Peter, I am still waiting. I am coming, Mr. Donatus. Sorry for the delay. No problem, I just want to tell you to stop fighting with your wife. It's not good, and the devil can take advantage of that to scatter your home. Remember what the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, a lot of homes have scattered. Children have become orphans and are suffering as a result of parents fighting mistakenly, one person killed the other. Of course, you know if you kill a person, you will go with the person. That is why it is not good to engage in fights with your wife or your husband. Avoid it. Neighbor, you will not understand. That woman is a nightmare. I don't rest in my house, and every day this woman will be accusing me wrongly. What is the meaning of that? Don't I have the right to go out again? Please calm down and make her feel valued. I think that will calm her down and make her stop suspecting you are having an affair in secret. Sincerely, Mr. Donatus, I don't like the fighting either. I want a peaceful home, and I am tired of fighting all the time. It is even shameful to be fighting with my wife as a Christian. I am tired of it, but my wife is the problem. She doesn't understand. She complains and nags all the time. Sometimes I feel like staying outside because of what I will face when I come back. But nevertheless. I will put what you said into practice. You are welcome. Don't worry, I will tell my wife to talk to your wife. I am sure she will change. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Denatus. Dear, how did it go? I have calmed him down. I think you should talk to the wife too, so that she stops suspecting her husband all the time. I mean, she should learn to build trust if she wants her home to stand. You are right. I will take a chance on that. Hello, Mrs. Peter. Mrs. Donatus, welcome. Please have a seat. Thank you. I am surprised to see you in my house. I hope there is no problem. No problem at all. I just want to have a moment with you as my fellow woman, concerning the way you fight and quarrel with your husband, it is not good at all. Bible say in Ephesians 5 verse 22 to 24. Wives, submit to your own husbands, as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Give your husband respect due to him, fighting him all the time will not bring any good result, instead you will end up destroying your home, as written in Proverbs 14 verse 1. The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands the foolish one tears hers down. Please be a wise woman. You will not understand because your husband is not like mine. Do you know this man leaves home in the morning and comes back in the evening all the time? Which woman will take that? What is he doing out there if he has no secret lover somewhere? Maybe the fault is with you. If you don't give your husband peace, he will prefer to stay outside in order to avoid your trouble. Proverbs 21 verse 9 says, Better to live on a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. And chapter 21, verse 19, says, Better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and nagging wife. You can see that no man likes to stay with a nagging and quarrelsome wife. It makes them distance themselves from you, and that's not good. Learn to give your husband peace whenever he returns. In that way, he will like to spend time with you. Fighting, starving, monitoring, Suspecting, and depriving your husband of his rights can never change him. Doing that makes them worse. Avoid it. And build a godly home where trust, fear of God, and love exist only. No problem, I have heard you. Thank you very much. I will be going now. No problem. Help me greet your husband. I will. Oh no. I have suffered. Look at the way she talks to me as if she has better character than me. I don't blame her. If not because of the way my husband behaves, will she be parading herself in front of me as the woman with good character? I hear. Dear, I think she is right. Let us stop fighting. It doesn't describe us as Christians. Let's build a happy home. I don't want us to be fighting all the time. It's affecting me. And who causes the problem? Is it not you? If you were like Mr. Donatus, our neighbor, we wouldn't have been having problems. Change your character if you want peace. All right, I will do my best to show you that I am a change man, but please try to understand me and learn to trust your husband no matter what. Even if he misbehaves, let your character be the one to change him. And fighting and quarreling are not part of it. No problem, I have heard you. Now can I have a hug from my wife? Please. Sure. <laughs> Why are they laughing? When they laugh, it looks as if they are laughing at me. I hate to see them laugh. It pains me. I feel jealous because they remind me of my broken marriage. I hate that. They should keep fighting. In that way, I will feel better. Mrs. Peter, you were at home. I thought you were with your husband. No, I didn't go out with my husband. Okay. I thought you were the woman I saw your husband with just now as I was coming home. No, I am not the one. Where did you see my husband? Is he coming back? No. Okay, maybe he has business to do outside. I thought so. I will go in now. I need a rest. My husband is with a woman, but my husband should be at his office by now. Why is he on the road with a woman, and who is the woman? And what is he doing with her by this time? I thought he said he doesn't normally have time to step out of his office until he closes. 
Look at how shocked she was just because I told her I saw her husband with a woman. In fact, she wanted to ask me for the address and location where I saw them. I like that. Let them continue to fight. I can't stand them smiling together. Could it be that this man is not what I thought he was? And yet he told me to trust him. He should have been at home two hours ago. What is still keeping him back? Men cannot be trusted. If you think you were with them, you will be surprised when they throw you down. Dear, I am back. Are you just coming back, or did you branch somewhere? I came home directly after we closed. Any problem? No, I am just asking. Meanwhile, I will be in the kitchen. She looks provoked. What could be the problem? He thinks he's smart. He's lying. He thought I didn't know she went out with a woman this afternoon. You see why men cannot be trusted. Trusting them is making a big mistake. His cup will be full one day. Let him keep playing smart. Dear, you have been acting strange since yesterday. What could be the problem? Nothing. I am okay. Okay, if you say so. We will be having a meeting after work today, which is going to take just two hours. Meeting again today. What do you mean by again today? We have not had a meeting for two weeks now. Have you forgotten that our meeting is only once every two weeks? I thought you had been having meetings all this time, because you always come back late. Not at all. Anytime I came back late, it was as a result of traffic, not meeting. Okay, I have heard you. Alright, I will be going now. He thought I am a baby. Traffic is the one holding him back all the time. Don't worry, one day every secret shall be made open. Let's be watching. Oh no, not here, not here. This car has stopped again in the middle of nowhere. What is wrong with this car? Why can't it start? What do I do now? I pray I see a taxi here. It's getting late, and it's difficult to see taxis around here. What is still keeping my husband up till now? I'm very sure the meeting ended exactly two hours ago, and since then he has not been anywhere near this house. I know he must have been with one of all these cheap girls around here. I know it. I knew that man was cheating on me. Other men are at home with their families. Except him. Let him continue to think God is not watching him. One day his cup will be full. In fact, let me call him. I know he will still lie, but at least let him know I know what he is doing. I am not a baby. Hello dear, is everything alright? Where are you? My dear, my. I know it. You are trying to find cover. God is watching you. No, dear, is not what you're thinking. My car, oh no, my phone is off. How do I explain to my wife that I'm stranded? Hello, hello, hello. Oh no. So it has reached this point, my husband has now cut off my phone. What an insult and disrespect. How could my husband hang up on me because of all these cheap girls? Why on earth should he do that? Okay, no problem. Let him continue in his hidden sin. All I know is that I will no longer take it. Enough is enough. I'm not going to cook anything in this house. Let him as well ask his cheap girlfriend to cook for him. I can see this man no longer has respect for this marriage. Let him go and come back. This house will not contain both of us. Thank you very much, sir. I don't know what I would have done if not for you. I would have still been stranded by now. God bless you, sir. You are God sent. No problem. You are welcome. I can't believe I will reach here by now. Dear, I'm home. She is not here. Oh dear, you are here. I am so tired. You will not understand what I went through today. But first, give me something to eat. I'm so hungry. Give you something to eat? Why didn't you tell your secret cheap lover to give you food to eat? You better go back there because there is no food for you in this house. Secret lover? What do you mean by that? If you like, pretend all you can. I know what you are doing, but I promise you my God will punish you, because no sinner shall go unpunished. Keep hiding in your sin. One day you shall pay for it. 
What is the meaning of this? What does this woman take me for? Is this my wife or another person? What kind of woman is she? She doesn't even want to hear me out. She has already concluded that I am cheating on her. Woman, woman, woman. I work from day to day just to make sure she never lacks. When I come back, what I will get is insults and different kinds of accusations. I am getting tired of that, and I mean it. Yeah. I am so hungry. Let me find something to eat first. You are hungry? You think I'm a fool? When you're done messing yourself up, you come and tell me you are hungry. Come and eat. Let me see. In fact, from now on, you will be the one to cook for yourself whether you like it or not, or better yet, call your secret lover to cook for you. Since that is what you want, let's do it. My wife did not cook anything, but I gave her money to cook something. What is the meaning of this? How can I have a wife and still go to bed on an empty stomach? Come to think of it, what is giving her that imagination that I am cheating on her? Has she caught me with any woman before? How can she come up with such an accusation without proving it? I don't want this. I want to have peace when I come back to my house. I use all my strength to work out there, and when I come back, I expect my wife to welcome me with happiness, not like this. Yeah. I am so hungry. You have not seen anything. This is just the beginning. Dear, I'm home. And if you're home, should I be dancing just because you're home on time today? Are you done playing around with your secret lover, or are you trying to deceive me? I am sorry you can't deceive me with your pretense. Not again. Why have you allowed Satan filled your heart with presumption? Why are you accusing me of cheating on you? Have you caught me with another woman before? What is wrong with you? Listen, I am tired of all this accusation. If you are tired, then stop your secret sin. Stop running to all these cheap girls in secret and coming in front of me, claiming to be holy. I know you are not. I can see you no longer wanting me around, since that's what you want. Suit yourself. Go and meet them. That is who you are. I am not begging you. And you better continue to live with them, because if you come back here, you will not like what you will see. Since I cannot have rest in my house, let her have the house and let me have my peace. What is going on? This man is not coming back. Let it not be that he meant leaving the house. I thought he was joking. Oh no, this is no longer a joke. <laughs> Look at her. <sighs> Pastor, my marriage is about to fail. What happens? Please sit down first. Thank you, Pastor. What really happened? Why are you crying? My husband left the house and refused to come back. There is no way your husband will leave the house and refuse to come back just like that. Pastor, we have been fighting for a while now. But why? You are a child of God? Why should you engage in a fight with your husband? A child of God should build a godly home, not a quarreling home. I don't know what came over me. I suspected he was having an affair behind my back, and that was what caused the quarrel. You suspected, not that you caught him in the act. How wrong we can be when we assume things and draw hasty conclusions without first checking them up. Such a disposition could cause friction in relationships just like this. It could equally lead to sinning against God if not repented of. Presumptuous people show little or no respect for others. They are judgmental, and they do things they have no right to do because they feel they know it all. In fact, they are governed by themselves. They are self opinionated self-conceited self-righteous, self-confident, and self-centered. They are proud and hasty in their conclusions, and that is not a quality of a child of God. You shouldn't just start accusing your husband just because you are suspecting him. Pastor, it was one of my neighbors who told me she saw him with another woman. And you rush into a conclusion. How are you sure the person is not trying to cause confusion between you and your husband? How are you sure you are not dancing to the music your enemy wanted you to dance to? We should learn to be wise. We should not allow anything to put evil imaginations in our hearts against our husband. Even if he is doing what you accuse him of, fighting him will not bring him back to you. Instead, it will push him further into the act. Every Christian woman should learn how to be like the description of a good woman in Proverbs 31 verse 10 to 31. 
a wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her, and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family, and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. That is a true description of a Christian woman. Go home and practice it. Thank you, Pastor. I have learned fighting and quarreling don't bring husbands closer. Instead, they push them far away. I pray he comes back. Look at what I have done. What gain do I have by acting like a worldly woman? Now, my husband has left the house for me. Oh God, bring my husband back. I am sorry for disobeying you and acting like the world. I promise to be a changed woman. Please bring my husband back to me. I am tired of staying alone, I miss him. Dear, you are back. I am sorry to have allowed an evil imagination to come between us. Please forgive my nagging, and my immaturity. You are welcome. Some people have set themselves up as judges over others. They take pleasure in condemning and finding faults in other people. They are certain that they understand people's motives, actions, and situations. They magnify the sins of others but minimize their own. For these people, being critical and judgmental is a default system. They pass judgment on others based on their standards without knowing or caring about God's standards. They condemn others and are charitable and unmerciful. Check your life, are you judgmental? Do you judge others by your own standards? Do you know that by judging others, you put them down and exalt yourself? It's unscriptural to judge, condemn, or speak evil of others. To set yourself as a judge over others is to make yourself equal with God, which is a sin. God is the judge of all, and only He can judge perfectly. He is God, He is supreme, He is omniscient, He alone knows and understands everyone's background and history, He knows everyone's heart, and He will judge everyone according to His own standard, not yours, so don't take God's place by judging others. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe, like, and share. God bless you. And remember, Jesus really loves you.